Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about website migration and how to move your website with minimal SEO impact. All right, so in this video, you will learn what is website migration and the different types of web website migration that can occur. You'll also learn about how to set goals and planning before you actually do the migration for the least uh, detrimental effects and also pre-migration prep, what you need to have in place before you actually do it. This is really, really important before you get started. Uh, then we'll actually talk about the process of migration, um, depending on um, what type of team or company you are, and then also redirect mapping, and that's really important to make sure that you tie up any loose ends before it's rolled out. So. Here's a quick fact before we get into the content, and I'm sure this may sound common sense, but it's actually quite interesting. So did you know that over 75% of businesses experience a significant drop in website traffic and search engine rankings during a migration? And I think one of the main reasons behind this is because they don't properly plan in advance for a website migration, or they miss out certain key steps that can affect their SEO. Uh, and this is a common trap, a common mistake from a lot of businesses. So that's why it's really great that you're watching this video and learning about website migration so that you make sure you do the proper planning and preparation in advance to minimize the SEO effects. So what is a website migration? It's basically website migration involves moving your website from one environment to another, such as changing web hosts, switching domains, redesigning the site structure, changing the technology behind it. Anything like that is considered a website migration. Um, it involves transferring files, databases, updating URLs and internal links, redirecting old pages to new ones, and testing the functionality post-migration. So there's a lot of moving parts here, and that's why a lot of um, businesses don't do it correctly because they're not informed of everything involved with a site migration. Website migration can significantly impact your SEO efforts if done incorrectly because when you change a URL and you don't redirect it, that can be a huge factor. Um, for example, altering page URLs without implementing the proper redirects can result in broken links and loss of organic traffic let alone some of the effects caused by not transferring some of the link equity from backlinks over to the new URLs. That can also affect rankings big time. So let's talk about some of the types of site migration. Firstly, there's the platform migration. So this involves moving a website from one content management system or CMS or platform to another. For example, let's say you, you migrate WordPress to Wix or WordPress to Squarespace, or maybe you had a website on Squarespace and you're moving to WordPress, or maybe you were on a platform and now you wanna have a custom built one. Um, so that's an example. Domain migration. So this occurs when you're changing domain names while keeping the same website content, or you could also change the domain name and change the website content and structure as well. I would do one thing after the next, just um, I would I would ch space out those two migrations separately um, if if you're doing both. And number three is content migration. So this involves reorganizing or restructuring existing content within the same domain. So it could be changing the URLs, the core uh, category names, the core structure, or it could be removing certain things or adding certain things as well. So the goals and planning is really important because that will focus your efforts and avoid any pitfalls. So basically you want the, the smoothest possible process and have the least effect on your SEO in terms of a negative way. So you wanna create a comprehensive timeline and action plan, like when are you doing each step and what actions do you need to, need to do for each of these phases or steps. And also, it's important to involve key team members in the process, uh, especially the planning stage, uh, so that the execution goes 
optimally, especially if you're working with multiple teams like developers, or uh, if you have an SEO team and work with them, or if you have other stakeholders um, that are involved with the website, make sure to involve them too, so they know what's going on and can help with the process. So you can use simple spreadsheets like Google Sheets or uh, Microsoft Excel uh, for planning purposes. They're a great tool to basically lay out step by steps and a timeline as well. Or if you use a project management system um, like Asana or ClickUp or something like that, like that, you can use that as well. So what you want to do is define exactly what you hope to achieve through this process because there's a reason why you're migrating and what is the objective of that migration um, and make sure that's aligned with your overall business strategy and your target so that um, it's moving towards a specific direction. And planning really allows everyone involved to anticipate any issues or challenges and make sure that you mitigate those um, as soon as possible. So here are some pre-migration preparation steps. Number one is do a content review. So you want to ex assess your existing content thoroughly. You want to know all the pages that are involved. Um, you want to evaluate um, the relevance and the quality of each piece of that of content that are that is going to be migrated over and you want to identify opportunities also for improvement because it's a great opportunity to review all your content see if it needs to be updated see if it needs to be optimized for certain keywords uh, during the migration process using the xml sitemap you can see all the pages from a high level so this is a great place to start and you can copy and paste uh, these URLs into a spreadsheet and then sort them alphabetically. This will allow you to organize the pages by hierarchical structure, and that makes it easy to chunk the migration process down into manage manageable sections. For example, say you have like five different categories. When you sort them alphabetically, you can actually see um, those five sections in little chunks, um, one after the other in the spreadsheet. So here's an example of an XML sitemap um, on Hike, and you can just basically drag your mouse from the URL column all the way down and then copy uh, that and paste it into spreadsheet. Number two is technical assessment. So you want to un uncover any technical limitations or challenges that may impact the smooth transition of your site, either on the old platform that you're on and or the new platform that you're going to. And you want to collaborate with your IT or development team uh, so that they can support uh, to mitigate any issues in that process. Because what you don't want is a major technical glitch and chaos ensues. You want to make sure that you cover all your bases. So let's talk about the migration process. So once you have everything prepared, what's going to happen during the actual process? So you want to have a scope and preparation session. You want to define that scope of work clearly by outlining all the tasks that need to be completed for each section. And you want to identify any resources that are required for successful migration. Maybe you need some additional developers, maybe you need um, some additional software to help with you, help, help you with that, any of that. You want to make sure you define all of that. And then you want to anticipate any potential challenges. Have a think, brainstorm with your team or yourself and prepare any contingency plan. So if this happens, then what will you do? Or what will the team do? Uh, if that happens, what will you do? Um, if this thing breaks, what will you do? Uh, and that will prepare you and have a robust plan for when you do that migration. So the more thorough it is, the less possibilities for disruptions and issues, especially when it comes to SEO for uh, during the post-migration process. So then there's development stages. So you want to break down the migration into uh, distinct development stages. Maybe there's certain sections or certain stages that your developers might need to do first, and then second, and then third. Um, so each stage should have um, a clearly defined objective and deliverable. So you can basically check that, yep, this has been done. Yep, it's been done correctly. Um, and then assign those responsibilities to each stage uh, to ensure accountability. So you can go to that team and make sure, hold everyone accountable who's involved with that process. Then you want to monitor the progress at each, uh, 
each stage to maintain alignment with the project timelines because you want to make sure that the migration doesn't take ages. You want to have a specific timeline, let's say it takes a week maximum, and make sure you stick within that timeline. If it goes over a bit, there might be reasons why. Maybe there was an issue that needed to be solved. Uh, so make sure to stick to that as best as possible and have regular check-ins with your team to help identify any bottlenecks or issues early on if they occur that so they can be fixed quickly and won't affect your SEO too much or if at all. Let's talk about some monitoring tools that you can use. Uh, so use tools such as Google Analytics, Google Search Console, as well as Hike SEO to track performance before, during, and after your website migration. Then you can see if there's any issues that are, have cropped up post-migration, and then you can rapidly solve those so it mitigates any, any risks. So here in Google Search Console, you can see uh, pages with redirects, 404 issues, and any other issues uh, that crop up with your site, and you can see where they've changed. So if you've done a certain stage um, in the migration process and suddenly it's shifted some things or changed some things, you can see why that might have occurred, and it's easy to troubleshoot. You can measure me metrics such as traffic, engagement le levels, conversion rates, um, and look at those to see if anything's changed after migration on specific pages or generally. So this allows you to identify any anomalies or issues early on without having to um, you know, face weird um, or surprising consequences down the road. So let's talk about redirect mapping. This is a really important part uh, to the whole process. Uh, so I hinted on it um, about it earlier. So you want to thoroughly test or review the redirects that you've created in your redirect map uh, before finalizing the migration, making sure that everything has been checked off. Uh, it's there. So you can also use Hike SEO uh, to automatically flag up any 404 not found errors and then quickly fix those as well if you've uh, left anything out. You can also look into Google Analytics to see any traffic to old pages that haven't yet been redirected. So that's a really good hack. You can go to the pages section and then filter out by uh, pages and see if those um, exist or not and then redirect those. So here's an example of Hike's action engine, the action section, and it will basically flag up anything or any issues technical or content wise uh, on site that need to be addressed or looked into. And it will tell you exactly how to do it, why it's important, and how long it will take, as well as a priority level. So Hike makes it super simple for the beginner uh, and small business owner, and as well as agencies, to take control of their SEO. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any sort of questions, uh, do reach out to us. And if you haven't yet already signed up for Hike SEO, please do. It's a fantastic platform to take control of your SEO and start getting more organic traffic, higher rankings to your site. All right, I'll see you there. Take care.